I have a lot of beautiful aquariums. And sometimes I have to think, Dave, it's time to stop adding to the collection. But first, let me get one more. There comes a point where you should probably just stop getting fish tanks, right? I mean, multi-tank syndrome is a real thing. I know that, I've experienced it, I'm in it. But there comes a point where you stop being an aquarium enthusiast and you just start being a fish freak, which, which is pretty much what I am. So I've wanted one of these fish for a long time. It's been about probably two years or so since I first saw a black nasty. And when I saw it, I was amazed by it. And I thought, I gotta have one of these. Eventually I'll have a South American or Central American tank and I can put one in there with some other fish. And then I found out that if you do that, these fish are so mean that they'll destroy anything that you put in there with it. They'll even come after you. In fact, if these guys get out of the aquarium, they'll slaughter your whole family. Just in case kids are watching, totally kidding about that last part. But they're mean and they get big. They get like 14 inches long. So they have to have a big tank dedicated to just one fish. And most people can't do that. And I shouldn't be doing that, but I am. In just a minute, I'm gonna do an unboxing of six of these guys that I got from Wet Spot Tropicals in Oregon. I put them in a 20 gallon tank. So I'm gonna show you the unboxing and then I'm gonna get this 72 gallon land and aquarium set up with you. So let's get started. Here's the 20 gallon long where my super tiny black nasties are gonna be living until I set up that land and rimless tank I was talking about. Cute little guys. Wet Spot did a great job shipping them and none of them perished on their journey. My wife was nice enough to float them for me since I was away at work. They've actually been floating for like about four hours with my wife doing frequent checks on them. Let's get them in the tank plop and drop style. Thanks to Westspot for partnering with me and offering 10% off for an unboxing video, although technically I failed at that because there wasn't even a box in this video, since I wasn't even home when they arrived. They're all really healthy looking, but a little on the stressed outside, and with good reason, I mean it was a pretty big trip, giving them some sauce to take the edge off. And let's take a peek into the future and see how they'll be doing in a few weeks. This is a few weeks later and they're still pretty skittish little guys, which I didn't expect since, well, you know, black nasties and all. Every time I feed them, they disappear into the shadows, but they're getting a little better. They're also a little nippy with each other sometimes, which you'd expect, but I thought maybe once they got a lot larger, not at this size. There's no fin damage yet though, so that's good. Once I can identify a male, I'll just be keeping one and feeding the rest of them to my African cichlids. Just kidding again, I'll rehome him. I'm just trying to piss some people off so I can get more comments. I know, it was kind of an uneventful unboxing video, but it was only 10%. I mean, West Spot, if you're watching, bump it up to maybe 20 or 30% and I'll give you one hell of an unboxing video. I'll even include the box. Landon Aquariums contacted me and they wanted me to do a review on one of their tanks. So they sent me one for free in exchange for a review. What you're thinking probably now that I said that, that this review is gonna be totally biased because I got the tank for free. But that's not true because if you go back, you can see my epistogramma setup. And that was with the Landon tank that I paid full price for. And you'll see that these are just awesome tanks. This aquarium just arrived a few days ago and I'm gonna show you how awesome this thing is. Then we'll get it set up. Subscribe or someone dies. Ding, ding. Landon does a great job shipping their tanks. There's almost no way to damage this tank in the crate, even when the delivery driver delivers it wrong side up. If there's a right side up sticker on the box, you can be guaranteed our delivery driver will never face it that way. Consistency is key. The clips holding the crate together are not the easiest to remove, but once the lid is off, take a look at this beauty. It's gorgeous. Absolutely. And they gave me a few goodies, like some filter media and a CO2 diffuser kit. I filled it with water and left it out on the porch overnight to make sure there aren't any leaks. Don't want to discover there's a problem after it's already up and running. And in the morning, no signs of a leak anywhere, so that's good news. Then I just used my Cichet Ultra Zero pump to remove the water. This is the same setup I used with my water changes too, and it's super quick. I won't bore you with the removal of the tank from the crate, so skipping ahead, here it is. Would you look at that? 12 millimeter glass. I love the rimless look, but I hate the open top because of rapid evaporation and the fact that my black nasties would all wind up on the floor covered in dust bunnies. So I'm having a lid made. Problem solved. Landon also provided me with one of their stands, which sits a bit low for me, but that's okay. I didn't have time to build one. And it looks great. I don't have any concerns about its ability to hold the tank. Some manufactured stands make you wonder. Before I start the scaping, you know what's missing, don't you? What would one of my tanks be without a nice black background? 
I use a cabinet mini roller and apply so many coats you wouldn't believe me if I told you. This took a while. I might have done more than necessary since there won't be any light peeking through from behind because of the wall, but I like to be thorough and make it look nice. All finished. And it's time to start the scape. Adding an egg crate to the bottom of the tank just in case, and I'd rather do it now than later. I already have the sand, some leftover clean blast I've been keeping in the garage left over from San Quentin. It really is pretty clean too, I mean I don't even rinse it first, just pour it right in there. Nice and easy. It took two 50 pound bags of this sand. San Quentin took about 18 of them. So now I'll get on with spreading this out. I'm thinking about keeping the sand higher on the sides with a plateau in the middle. And I'll eventually find out that my Eheim heaters are a little too long and unfortunately I'll have to scoop some of the sand out from the back corners. These rocks have been scrubbed under hot water, but I don't boil them. I've heard about rocks exploding while they're boiling, which sounds a little on the traumatic side. Plus, I've been doing this for years now like this with no issues. So maybe it'll come back and bite me on the ass someday, but until then, this is how I do it. Black nasties gotta have some heat. They like it warm. Since I'm a gracious fish lord, I'll hook up a heater on each end of the tank. If you don't know why I use two heaters instead of one, then ask me in the comments. I just wish Eheim made their heaters a little shorter than this because I had to scoop that sand away like I mentioned earlier. I wish I could lay these horizontally, but I think they'd be more of an eyesore that way, in the, at least in this tank. I decided to add a larger rock in the far back right corner, but is it enough? Hmm. Oh, hello, San Quentin. Looks like you've got something I need. Now we're cooking with some fucking gas. And I can put you, medium rock, right over here. Ah, we're getting there. Driftwood coming up in a little bit. I'm moving medium rock over to the opposite corner and doing a little rearranging. This is everything after my modifications, and I do like it more. The larger fake rock was definitely needed in here, in my opinion, too balanced the other way. Time to fill it up with some dechlorinated water. Never forget your dechlorinator. I, I have a full video on what happens when you do forget that, because I forgot once. Ready for launch. Those black specks I'm picking out are what I call bad fish keeper flakes. See, I didn't store the tube properly after my previous water changes, so a bunch of algae built up and came spewing out when I ran water through it, catching more black specks with my fishnet. Too bad you had to see that. Embarrassing. I'll be using a Fluval 407 canister for this tank. I had an extra one just lying around and it should do the trick for what I need. I think the clips broke when I removed it from my aquarium a while ago, so I had to order new ones. Impossible to install with one hand on the clip and the other on the camera, so skipping ahead, all done. Adding some of the filter media that Landon provided, and I don't want to have to cycle this tank the long way, so I'm rating one of my FX6 filters that I have on Alcatraz. I've been meaning to clean it anyway, so it works out perfectly. It was pretty dirty and the sponges were clogged, so that made it spew out micro bubbles into the tank. If you ever have micro bubbles in your tank, then that could be one of the reasons you need to clean your filter. There should be enough beneficial bacteria for six small fish if I just take a little bit of the biomedia and just look at that nice flow. Soothing to watch. Hard to pull myself away. Now I best get that heater controller hooked up. 
I'll be installing the Inkbird 306A because it has dual probes and dual relays. So if one fails, you're still covered. Can't be too careful. I put them somewhere between the two heaters so they can register the coolest part of the tank, not the part that's right next to the heater. It's finally ready for me to add some black nasties. But first... So you might be wondering why I have six of these guys if I only plan on keeping one of them. Well, I originally wanted to have a male and a female, and I was going to breed them and have a ton of babies that I would sell to the local fish store, you know, make some money, but also have some fun with them. The more I started thinking about it, I was thinking, man, who's going to want these babies? There's going to be such a limited market for them that it's going to be hard to sell them. So I called the local fish stores and I asked if they wanted to have them, and they said, no, there's no way that they would want them. So I'm just going to go with one male. But that's why I got six, because I wanted to have a pair. And also, you never know if there's going to be some deaths in the shipment, you know, if they're not going to make it. I want to make sure I get one male. I'll just have to rehome the, the other five, which isn't ideal, but that's just the way it'll have to be. Let's get these guys into their new, beautiful home. And then I'll be adding some driftwood to the tank. After I add that driftwood, I'll show you how the nasties like their new home after they've been in there for a few days. So stick around. Here they are after a few days. They're a bit less skittish than they were in the 20 gallon long, which is good. I really think they enjoy it in here. At least they're acting like they do. Again, thanks to Landon Aquariums for providing me with this tank and stand. I couldn't be happier with them. I'm also releasing an extra video during the week, trying for every Tuesday, a series called Fish Home Refresh, where I talk about whatever's going on that week. So make sure you check that out. Until next time, that's a wrap.